Recording in progress. Okay, you want me to go start? Yeah. Okay. Uh, welcome everybody to uh, Hickman's Call. Uh, just want you to know that you're our most important members and it's, it's you that keep us being able to grow and get better and better. Um, and we thank you. Um, I'm also happy to say that we have more patrons than ever in the history of NYA. So thanks to you and your support. And uh, now let's move it to Neil, who you really came to listen to. <laughs> okay, Neil. Hey, everybody. Can you, all right. Uh, how's everybody doing? I hope you're all good. Let's just crank it up and get some questions going. We're all good here. We just, we just, we really uh, we feel good. Everybody's ready to go. We just need a question. Well, the first one is, how are you feeling, Neil? I feel good. I, I answered that one even before it was asked. That's <laughs> how on it I am. <laughs> uh, someone is comparing our archival release strategy to other people who seem to have like a plan targeted specific eras, et cetera, whereas we are kind of all over the place wondering if there's a method to the madness. Our plan is to be all over the place at all times. Considering our plan, I think we're doing great. Are there still plans for movie soundtrack audio releases like Solo Trans, Journeys, Human Highway? Yeah, we're listening to those now. We have a list of them, and probably the first one will be uh, Berlin, and the second one will be Heart of Gold, the Jonathan Demi film from the late Jonathan Demi, great filmmaker. And uh, and then after that, we got about fourteen or fifteen more on the list, and we just we'll have to review them and see what the quality's like and. Uh, but we know those two are really good, and well recorded, and got a lot of songs on them. So that's what we're going to start with. Berlin will be first. Questions uh, about uh, the Ed Bunny? No, go ahead. Okay, uh, will there be a tape log in the back of the Volume Three book? And if not, would we provide one to them if they ask very nicely? Is there a tape log, John? I don't think there is. Is there? No. We did that once, right? We did it one time. We did it, we did it twice. We did it twice. Okay. Well, let's, you know, we could get a tape log to them. There isn't going to be one in the book, not in this book. Definitely not. <laughs> I'd be pretty sure of that because I've seen the book. It does not. Yeah. You you were you were adamant about it. Yeah, there's something about it that I didn't like. I don't know what it was. I think it it, uh, it revealed a lot of other things that I didn't want to get into because it was so much information. Something like that, anyway. But, you know, if everybody's crazy about it, we'll figure out a way. I think there were things that you didn't like, the you versions that people were asking about that, you know, the too many things that you didn't like is, I, is my re recollection. Yeah, something like that. There were yeah. a lot of about stuff that I, you know, if I'd wanted them in there, I would have put them in there. There's, you know, there's there's hundreds of other versions of things that are on there, and and the only ones we they saw are the ones on the periphery, you know, and uh, we went through all of them and chose the ones that we put out. So, and that takes a long time. So it took a long time for us to put this together. So volume three took a really long time. So, and we like to do a good job. So. Uh, that's basically it. People asking about volume four, what years did it cover? It, it, volume four will cover from about 2002 uh, to, uh, no, it covers, let's see, this will be. It should start at like 88. Yeah, volume, volume four starts at about 88 and goes to 2002. It's got when will we get alchemy glory. and you know which shows will, will be represented on it? When will we get alchemy? Yep. 
That's in 2012. That'll be in the last uh, volume of the archives. Uh, I can do about the dates. The dates are just what they are. It gives me at least that's one thing that's set in stone. So we don't have enough time on a, we don't have enough room in a volume to do 35 years, which is what we would have had to do if we hadn't stopped it in 2002 or 2003. Volume four that would, is. would have been a big box. Very big. And is volume oh. four going to be Atmos only or in stereo 192.24 as well? That's a good question. Everything is available on the archives in 192.24 stereo. The original mixes are all there. And Atmos is, uh, is the new mixes that we've done of almost everything. It's not everything that gets mixed in Atmos. But a lot of a lot of it does, and uh, that's that's a bridge that we're going to cross. We haven't figured that out yet, a hundred percent. But I know that all almost all the songs will be mixed in Atmos, and some of them will only be the uh, the one ninety two twenty fours, and some of them will be analog that came out. You know that were taken from the old analog masters. Uh, so that's you know, as we go into this uh, into this era. Uh, that's a big question on my mind is how I'm going to do that because if you put twice as many things on the discs, you got twice as many discs. And and as it is, uh, we had, uh, I think on volume three, we had like 15 or 16 get discs. 11. 17. 17. 17, yeah. So 11 or 12 of them were CDs. And the CDs have got, you know, that, that CD quality. And... Uh, then, then there was the Blu-ray discs that that had the films on them. There's three or four of those. So uh, I would like to have all the originals uh, and put them out. Uh, but that's a decision that hasn't been made yet, and we have to look at the technology of it. And uh, we could make them all available online for sure. I mean, we were thinking of having a... Uh, NYA, all of the volumes put in their own place online. So you can just go through the volumes and just listen to volume one, volume two, or volume three, volume four, all the way through on uh, on something that looks just like the archive, like just like NYA, but it's just NYA volume four. Uh, if we do that... <laughs> Um, that would be all of original mixes in 192. We would have 192 digital copies of them available. So that's what we uh, that's what we're trying to do. It's just uh, we don't can't put them all on the discs. There's too many discs, and the Atmos is really cool sounding. And we have a lot of these sound a lot better than the rough mixes that we have of of things that didn't come out and things that are uh, uh, you know like. Uh, one comes to mind is there's a 17 minutes plus version of uh, 60 to zero, which is the original version uh, done from uh, plywood digital and, you know, the original one. And it's um, it just rocks. And I've always loved it. And Nico and I put it together, a stereo version of it from the original. We recorded it together. And then we just remixed the whole thing in Atmos all of that plywood session and the uh, and the blue notes session in front of it we just we just remixed all of that in atmos and it's got a really great sound and uh a lot of these they're not like things we spend a lot of time on doing the mixes the rough mixes because they weren't even takes that we used there was no way to use a 17 minute take because there's nothing that we could have put it on at the time that was long enough so we've got it now, and uh, it, we're doing the best we can with it, and uh, there'll be more news on that, because that's a moving moving target. Can you talk about Electric Judy? I'm excited about Volume 3 and ordered the Deluxe, but wanted to know about this one. Electric Judy was a 
disc that was originally talked about that is not on it. However, a lot of the songs that were going to be on Electric Journey, Judy are on, um, it's called, I think, uh, it's either Across Across the Water, I think it's called. And there's two, there's two CDs of Across the Water and one, uh, you know, almost two hour film. And it's a really a good crazy horse thing. And it's got all up, it's got really great stuff on it. And I thought that was better than what we had for Electric Judy. Uh, but some of the things from Electric Judy will be on it. This, you, that's the problem with telling people what you're doing before you're finished. And, you know, like we worked on this for three years, so there was, you know, I can't stop talking about it, so that's my own fault. And here we are. Yeah, so here we are talking about this. It's just going to be the same thing again. But that's okay. That's the way it goes. Uh, a lot of questions about uh, performance plans. Uh, anything besides Farm Aid on the horizon? Yes. Uh, I'm going to go out with, uh, with Micah and Anthony uh, and Corey on drums and bass. And we're going out and we're going to be uh, playing a few shows uh, as we come home from Farm Aid. And there'll be a couple of them announced very soon. They'll probably be in uh, on the East Coast and then going towards Michigan and then Ohio. And then a few other ones on the way, probably, depending on how much time we have, on the way to the West Coast. And they'll probably be uh, either small outdoor venues or uh, or or indoor uh, theaters. This one's from our good friend Omar. Hi Neil, this is a question about your live performances. I've seen you use hand signals like thumbs up or thumbs down to direct the band at the end of songs like Rockin' in the Free World. I guess you're calling chords to end on. Can you explain in detail? Not much detail. It has, it has to do with where we are in the song. And they know where they are, and I know where we are, so this can either go up or down from there. And usually that means uh, there's a few few varieties, so there's no real swift answer to that. But it is a direction to the band as to what chords we're going to use to where we're going. But we just like to make it up on the spot. Uh, any plans to reissue the uh, Sal's tube amp repair shirts? <laughs> yeah, write that down, Bonnie. Let's do, put that in the store. That's a good idea. I what love is those. it? The Sal's the tube amp Sal. repair. Yeah, the Sal Trentino uh, amp t-shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I picked that question because I want one. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I like that one. I like one of those, too. Good okay. question. Have you ever thought about do creating a singles seven inch vinyl box set with the picture sleeves from around the world? So many great picture sleeves over the years. Also a good idea. Uh, I've never thought of that, but that is interesting. It's a lot of singles. And, uh, you know, let's write that down. We'll ask Warner Brothers if they would like to do that. A lot of this has to do, when it comes to putting out things like that, um, as a lot of it has to do with uh, Reprise wanting to do it and being able to do it. Do you have a plan on to play Red Sun live in the future? I haven't got any plans to do that, but it's not a bad song to try. I've done it a couple of times. I did it on a tour of Europe a couple of times. Uh, I've gotten a few questions about uh, film and album releases for a few recent tours. Coastal Tour that we've said we've been working, working on. Roxy, the Love Earth Tour. Any status of this? Those are all in the works. 
Coastal uh, is uh, the, the soundtrack for the film that Daryl made, which is coming out very soon. And it's going to be like shown in theaters like we showed uh, Human Highway, or, or what, not, not Human Highway, like we showed uh, Harvest Time. Uh, you know, and a one night showing in theaters, we'll put it out like that, and then it'll become available. Um, that's going to happen. And there is an album called Coastal Soundtrack that comes with it. And that album is interesting because it has a lot of songs that aren't on uh, um, before and after, and a lot of songs that weren't, uh, yeah, they just weren't there. Uh, but we did them. Uh, on coastal we did like uh as i remember um there's about five or six songs uh you know um i wish i had a list with all the names on it but uh, there's a single version of i am a child that you did only yeah, one, time. one time yeah i am a child that I did, and there's also the version of I'm a Child that is on it, uh, that is on Coastal Soundtrack, is from the sound check. So I did three or four sound check versions, or maybe five. And the, the sound checks are, uh, there's three of them that are interesting because I didn't sing it. So I did like, I did a vocal with it that was uh, like a shadow of what the song was it's kind of like a, a memory and it's in a different octave it's uh, they're sung quietly an octave lower so they're they're interesting those three uh expecting to fly i am a child and uh song x they're all done like that where i sing it an octave lower and so that's an interesting thing it's not a pure live recording <clears throat> 